Hey everybody, we are back at the Microchip booth, S110 at CES 2020, and this is usually the part where we go live and I completely forget everything that I was supposed to say, but I wing it anyway. Um, this is our absolute last live of the day, and we are super happy for all of you who have joined us throughout the day. It's been great fun. We've talked about the technologies in the smart home. We've talked about how we've enabled it. Um, you know, and if you are in Las Vegas, if you are at CES and you haven't come by yet, I'm going to give you one more reason to come by. Just one more reason. We have cornhole, people. And uh, if you're not from the Midwest and you don't know how to play this, uh, don't worry. I'm not from the, from the Midwest and I don't know either. But I, su I assume you have to get this thing in the hole somewhere. So we're going to, we're going to try it. Oh, so by the way, I actually got that in like when we were just playing around, I promise you. But uh, whatever. So let's talk about the last piece of the puzzle here for the connected home and for connected infrastructure in general, security. So everybody wants to know, everybody has very, very valid concerns about how we're going to secure all of this connected infrastructure because we have con technology inside the house that's now connected to the outside world. We have smart cities and all of it is, you know, in some form or fashion able to be contacted by parties that we won't we don't want to contact and manipulate our technology so for customers out there who are thinking about implementing security who need to implement security i brought the first and foremost expert i promise you in security at microchip technology mr xavier Bignale. how are you doing xavier good 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 thanks wayne thanks wayne for having me today it's awesome, awesome. It's really good to have you. And if you, I'm sure you've seen this face before because he's actually done at least three live streams with us in the past. Uh, so he's very comfortable in front of the camera. And I'm just going to start throwing curveballs at him, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So, you know, we'll start with you know now that every every device inside the home is beginning to get connected to the outside world, and you have cloud services and all sorts of things like that. Mm -hmm. What are the problems that you know? customers who wish to implement, our customers who wish to implement these sorts of uh, new technologies into their products will face? Also, first of all, you know, when we go to clients, the, the first reaction is, do I really need that, right? Mm -hmm. And I've said that in a couple of live streams before is, it's like, do I need a life insurance? Do I need a <laughs> car insurance? Well, you don't want to pay for it really until you really need it, right? And that's kind of the philosophy behind security. Absolutely. So what, what changed really in the past, well, pretty much in the past, year and a half, the big brands of consumer product have been hit by pretty large attacks, and yeah. not just once, but twice, and then they are patching and patching and patching and patching, and now you are in a, you're in a correction mode instead of being in prevention mm. mode, right? So you want to plan a little bit better. Sure. So those are really the, the problems is the, the basic practices are there, they exist in multiple markets. The consumer industry in IoT is still learning the, what those basic practices and once you learn you start to learn how to implement them and that's the motion that's finally happening we've had a couple uh. of uh, quite a bit of customers just just today really asking us already three meetings in the last hour that was the same thing tell me how do i start so now you go back to the principle and the level of education to start with okay. so that's really you go back to the education that it's finally picking up beyond the big brand okay. so it's really all about good practice and understanding that you need to address the problem yeah. and then it's pretty easy to handle the issue from there on? Easy, there, there's, uh, I mean, the, the entire security world that has its own complexity, and I'll talk about it, I think, in a minute. Okay. But we try to make it easy, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, let's let's lead into that. What do we what do we do to to ease our customers, uh, you know, tensions when, when they're diving into mm -hmm. fixing the security issues that they, that they have now discovered they need to fix? So let's talk about the, those basic practices, really what they are. Again, I'm going back to the series of live stream we've done together. We have that, that's the, the, entry, um, the entry slide we have in pretty much all of them. You need to trust who you're talking to. Sure. So we are in the world of IoT. We got a cloud that talks to a bunch of edge devices. To trust that, you have two things you need to trust, the firmware you run on and the connection itself. So that now you have the notion of keys that are gonna authenticate the connection to a cloud. You want to protect the keys in one container. That would be the family of secure elements that we, we sell. Yeah. And you have uh, the firmware. For the firmware, 
it needs to boot from a genuine firmware. So we talk about secure boot. Again, depending on the type of architecture you have, there are different offerings that we have, whether it's from FPGA to MPU to microcontrollers uh, to uh, hypervisors on the side of those things, we have that. So firmware and uh, keys for communication. Then what you want to do is to make sure you protect the IP that's in your co code. Mm. You want to verify the code during runtime. Okay. Very technical uh, similarity to the secure boot, okay. which happens different point of time. Okay. We continue the same concept of verifying the code after an update. Over the age, you will want to update your firmware, right? Okay. To make sure it has the greatest and less, uh, the, great, the latest and greatest of whatever the engineers have pushed into the, the code. All of that, when you're communicating, you want to you want to protect your communication, you want to encrypt your communication. All, same thing here, standard practices are in place. We, call, we talk about pretty much any of the communication out there have an encryption technique of the data. TLS, the Bluetooth profiles, okay. uh, the LoRa AES and whatnot. They all of that in place. So make sure you use that. Don't keep things in the clear. Okay. Then on the embedded security world, you have the layer of how do we manage privilege? So privilege is when you push a login and a password, you get into a system, right? Okay. So that would be more for, for quite larger system. You start to talk about multi-zone. You want a uh, trusted zone and an untrusted. We talk about multi-zone security, trusted execution environment. All those terms are out there, depending again on the core, okay. the different providers of those IP. And this is within a particular device itself, where you, we have different zones of, of uh, exactly, with different yeah. trust profiles. Uh, exactly, exactly. So that's really at the embedded level. That's what we provide as semiconductor providers. Ah, I see. It's not all. Then you have the world of software security and the world of cloud security, and those are two different industries that needs to sit on top of an embedded system. Okay. Okay. So that's that's those are the basics. If you have all of them, you're in pretty good shape already. Ah. Okay. <laughs> well. Wow. This. You know. So really, it's all about first of all understanding the problem, understanding what you need to do. And then it's basically about uh, well contacting Xavier here at <laughs> Microchip. <laughs> No, it's, it's about taking advantage of some of the technologies that we've developed and implemented in our products and technology, in our products, uh, you know, from the tiny ECC-608A uh, uh, crypto authentication chip to the, the trust zone uh, stuff that we're going to be talking, where we're talking about in the booth, actually next door to ours, the, uh, the other microchip booth. We actually have a pretty big presence here. That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, so... We, we have, uh, how many different demos do we have uh, it, at CES right now that discuss the security aspects? I think we have five of them, and we've been trying to touch all those concepts from uh, one demo to the other. So you mentioned the secure element. We've actually launched this year the Trust Platform program, which offer a secure uh, provisioning service on top of our secure element uh, devices. Wow. We launched that in uh, September uh, this year. Right next to us, we have uh, a trust zone example. We have on um, a Cortex M0. We have FPGA multi-zone security. As you can see, those two concepts are actually pretty similar. You have a hypervisor that manages different zones to uh, manage privileges. Mm -hmm. uh, what else we have? We have uh, a microprocessor. I think they're also trying trust zone on the, on my processor. And we have a secure boot, a secure boot assist device, which is our CC1702. Wow that leaves next to larger core than what we carry, such as Intel or Broadcom, MediaTek, NVIDIA, yeah. of course, to help the secure boot process in the, in the computing market. Okay. So that's what we've been showing today. Okay, perfect. So really, it doesn't matter what you're trying to secure. Microchip has a solution for you, uh, whether it's the tiniest of uh, eight microcontrollers in an embedded system, all the way up to, well, really stuff that we don't make. Uh, we have the, the, no, the know-how and the wherewithal to help you secure them. So that's kind of the takeaway here. And Xavier, I really appreciate you being with us. It's been awesome. Thanks, uh, a challenge, I'm going to challenge you to a uh, game of cornhole when All we're right. finished. But you know, since this is our last live of the day, of the day um, and by the way, I, I have uh, my, one of our key people here who's super scared that I'm going to try and put her on camera. I am not. <laughs> but thank you, Donna. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mr. Wicken. Thank you, everyone. This has been an awesome, awesome time here at CES. If you are here in town and you haven't made it to the back of South Hall, please come on down. Talk to Xavier. Talk to Barack. Talk to Galit. Talk to Edwin. Talk to Ashish. And many, many others that have all of this knowledge basically just kind of stirring around in their heads. Ask them any question you want. 
Speaking of questions, live stream at microchip.com is actually still open. We haven't gotten any questions yet, but if you have them, it goes directly to me, believe it or not. Uh, we'll get your question answered and get it back to you. And all of these are going to be reposted on our YouTube channel. They're going to be on your Facebook timeline. Interact with us, have fun with us, and enjoy the rest of your week at CES 2020.